Okay, so thank you very much for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. I used to be actually uh, an employee of the National Bank of Belgium a few years ago, so you know I know the place uh, reasonably, reasonably well. So uh, this is, uh, let me start by saying this is a great paper. So I enjoyed uh, reading it. I've learned uh, many things uh, from it. Uh, there is a lot of work behind this paper. So first of all, they have constructed a production-based measure of emission efficiency at the installation level. So that's you know, quite, quite an important job. And so instead of using balance sheet data or, or rather, let's say, less, um, uh, or less other system that would provide them with less coverage of data, they have taken you know, the way of you know, doing things uh, the proper way and measuring emissions at the installation level. Second, and you know, most uh, noticeable and new in the literature, they have collected uh, information on state aids, 24,000. So it didn't provide the figure, but it's actually 24,000 instances of state aid on which they have collected data. And then they have uh, translated these into industry NACE here. Uh, support, uh, support value and, and types. So, big uh, data effort, very interesting. Um, I think, you know, one can summarize the paper in saying what is the interaction between the ATS and this uh, national state aid policy uh, to support the energy transition. So that's the leaf motif of the paper. Now, the background is a picture that uh, Leo has already provided. Uh, let's say in the last few years, we have seen you know, this increase in the price of uh, carbon, the carbon tax applied by the EU, but at the same time, we have seen a big increase in the aid which is given to firms for doing uh, the uh, green transition. So the, and, you know, both these policies are, are affecting the decision of firms. Now, it's good on a sense, uh, especially after 2017, uh, the emissions of uh, uh, European firms of CO2 have decreased. Uh, the blue line, I think, is manufacturing. The red line is uh, energy, if I remember well. These are pictures that I borrow from their paper. And this is, again, the raw data. So, as Leo was saying, in, in order to disentangle, uh, you know, in order to measure the impact of the ETS, they, uh, they divide firms into high carbon exposed and low carbon exposed. Uh, so, for example, the red picture on the left uh, will be uh, the energy sector. Uh, the red one will be the high exposed and the blue ones will be the low exposed. You can see that in the power industry, there has been a lot of progress done essentially by 30 firms. So it's the firms in red who post 2017 have really reduced their emissions. As for the clean ones, they were already you know, uh, on the different standard of CO2, they you know, didn't do much. That's just the raw data. Uh, the right-hand side figure is the same figure, just uh, you know, normalized to 2016. So. Uh, fairly the same information. If you look at manufacturing, uh, you can see some progress by the dirty third. So again, uh, this is manufacturing now, and the red line is uh, you know firms who are were very carbon exposed. Uh, in these firms, indeed, post 2017, they you know reduce to a good amount their emissions. The blue low ones, they produce, but not by much. I will come back to this, uh, to this point uh, towards the end of my presentation. So this, just, this was just the raw data, okay? And basically, what the authors will do, will uh, use an econometric framework to extract from this raw data a message which can already be seen in the raw data. So there has been a reduction of carbon emissions, particularly by dirty firms, and particularly for the energy sector. So, you know, it's, com it's uh, 
I find this uh, comforting that both the raw data and the econometrics provide you know, the, same, the same message. Now, in terms of the national policies, uh, the authors have uh, scanned uh, through documentation to identify you know, thousands uh, of instances of state aid, and they have classified this into industry, country, year sometimes, level of support, and then there are four different policies that were considered, and mainly two then in the empirical analysis. And these graphs provide uh, an idea of the strength uh, of the, co uh, of the strength of the distribution, if you want, of the aid for the four broad classes of uh, 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 state aid interventions. And the one on the top, which is the renewable energy support, is the one you know, with, uh, with the, you know, the most intensity, the, the, the highest intensity. Now, these uh, equations, uh, um, in a sense, uh, show what is, the, uh, what is the estimation strategy used by the authors. So the first equation, which has been shown by Leo, uh, shows the, you know, the difference in different strategy used by the authors. So there is the post, which is post 2017, and then there is this indicator CP that indicates whether the firm, the installation actually, was carbon, expo carbon price exposed or not. And then they did also an event study, which is the second equation. So they, do, they did you know, uh, yearly interactions. These are you know, the pictures that uh, Leo presented, so the event study ones. Um, and then they do a third exercise on which they didn't have the time to present uh, the equation, which is basically uh, a measure of heterogeneity of the impact. So there is still the post dummy with the carbon uh, uh, price exposed uh, dummy. And then there is the coefficient beta 3, uh, which is very important, which is the interaction of the post, of the carbon price exposed, and the industry country measure of whether the country has, you know, very generous uh, policy towards uh, the carbon transition. Okay, so this is the event study result, which has already been presented by Leo. That's for, you know, the aggregate of installations. Then Leo showed that this uh, differential effect between manufacturing and energy. So the big progresses really have been made in the, in, you know, in the field of energy. And then this is, these are the coefficients uh, of the, you know, the triple interaction uh, um, uh, equation. And you can see there is on the first column uh, a positive coefficient of 0 0.086 for the triple interaction. And uh, uh, on the second column, there is a negative coefficient for the triple interaction. The first column is manufacturing, so that's the positive effect which counteracts the negative effects of the, uh, of the uh, carbon, uh, of the uh, trading emission system increase in prices. And in the second column, manufacturing, we see that the effect of the policy, uh, sorry, the second column is energy, the effect of the policy is amplified by the generosity of uh, the state aid. Now, there is lots of robustness. There are alternative sets of fixed effects. There are some direct controls for the price of energy, alternative measures of support intensity, or less versus Poisson estimator. So it's a great paper. I just have a couple of remarks. The first one is that the paper has the right data to look at the impact, at the differential impact of ETS between low and high exposed installation. The result is positive, very significant, heterogeneous. However, the regression doesn't allow us to take home uh, uh, a measure of the overall effect of the ETS uh, increase in the price, because what we can only measure is the difference in the response between the high and the low exposed. Uh, any, but however, if you remember the, you know, the simple raw data that I was showing you at the beginning, there was very little action going on in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of emissions. 
for the low exposed firm. So you might be very close to, to the actual total effects of the policy. My second remark is that the paper you know, has extremely rich data on state aid, and the analysis of en on energy efficiency, efficiency makes a lot of sense. Uh, these firms are hit by high carbon price. They need to become uh, more energy efficient. And in those countries in which the state aid is more generous, they do it more. So that makes perfect sense. However, for manufacturing, I'm still puzzled why in countries in which the state aid was high, actually this carbon, carbon uh, transition was actually hampered. Uh, so there are no examples currently provided in the paper of actual industries uh, comparing between in one country and one other. So if you really want to push that way, I think you need to provide clear examples of how it happened. Maybe governments uh, picked up uh, the bad apples. So they didn't want uh, certain firms uh, who were particularly exposed to uh, reduce their emissions too much. So I don't know. There's something, there's something which, is, uh, which doesn't sound right. There is something to which you allude in the paper, which I think might be interesting, which might be the war in Ukraine. Because you do use price controls for energy, but one thing is the price use, one thing is the price of a good, and the other thing is the availability. You know, the price might be 10 or might be 5, but if I don't have any uh, short-term or medium-term alternative to Russian gas, I have to use other things like coal. And then a few other remarks uh, that I can discuss with the authors, like the paper is well written and enjoyable to read, uh, but it was a first draft, so a few uh, details like what is the initial fee allocation you know, for a reader who is not in the field will be uh, gladly appreciated. Then there is some material in the appendix who is not referenced in the main paper, so some material is provided in the appendix but it's not explained. Then for energy producer, I think you do not have actual emissions. So you cite a paper by Nicholson and Hitz, but you, know, you need to provide a little bit more than just a citation for the reader to trust your measure. And then I was wondering to what extent the exit of the UK uh, from the EU and so from the ATS uh, has had an impact on, on the other countries. Because the, the UK, you know, the, the system before was such that uh, the balance of payments of ATS was not zero for all countries. Some countries were systematically buying uh, emission trading uh, uh, allowances from other countries. So the fact that the UK exited from the EU and so from the ATS is something that must have had an impact, also probably differential impact on some other countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giordano.